Skating is really fun, even though I've never skated in my entire life. Playing skating games is even fun, even though I've never played any skating games in my life. So, well fuck the intro. All the Ollie World is this indie skating game where all you do is skate around the entire world because the world is built of skating tracks. This world is built by five skating gods who have five different islands and they have built tracks for each of these islands. There's a skating wizard as well. This skating wizard goes by the name Chiffon who has been a skating wizard for a while by impressing the skating gods by skating in every single island. But now she is coming to a retirement and you are that special skater who is training to replace that skating wizard and in order to do so you have to impress all of the skating gods who have built each area. So your journey begins as a skater by learning new tricks and tips from your fellow friends named Mike, Sue's dad and no he's not anybody's daddy as of yet and also Chiffon. This is the third Oli Oli game with a brand new 3D engine while still keeping the 2D look and it looks and plays a lot better than the previous Oli Oli games and those were a completely 2D fest. Even though I've never played the previous Oli Oli games, I did see the gameplay of it and I can see a large difference between both of these games visually and just how it plays. I think it just gives or takes you right into that world more so. Each location in this world looks a lot different with quite different styles as each island represents what each god created. Skating in these lands is really fun. You learn various tricks to go through various obstacles and what you learn almost never stops. In each and every land, you get at least one trick to learn that will help you in the tracks further ahead. Some tricks are just used to show off and earn more points while some tricks will actually help you to cross an obstacle. Speaking of points, as you go through each tracks, you earn points. No matter what tricks you do, you will earn points. Whether it's you going through a wall or going through a rod or it's as simple as just jumping. Never thought that jumping will give you so many points. In each and every track, you will also see certain NPCs who have scored a certain point and you can score more than them. Sometimes if you earn more than them, that will give you some collectibles. Sometimes it doesn't do anything. It's just you able to cross those NPCs is a small achievement in itself. Apart from that, you do have various other challenges that are given by your friends. Suze and dad might give you one challenge, but Mike is a bitch because he wants to give you three variety of challenges which are hard and those are the hard parts. But you don't need to complete any challenges as far as you cross that finish line. The most important objective becomes crossing the finish line. That's the number one most important thing. As far as you are doing that, you are good to go. Obviously with doing these challenges you can earn new collectibles by unlocking these new items. These collectible items are basically for a customization. You might get new skateboards, you might get new shirts, hoodies, maybe a hat, maybe a glass. So many things that will just customize your character a lot more better and make you look a lot more cooler. With that being said, all these challenges are very very much achievable. You just need to work around a little bit to find out how you can cross them. That's where the fun lies overall. You skate through different terrains and the scale of it increases as you go forward. You can even decide to choose a different route which is named as Nali route which is basically a bit difficult than the normal route. That brings you more opportunity to earn more points as well as possibly to meet new characters. But some tracks are very tricky so you need to go through these tracks and die a few times to understand how to cross these tracks. At least that's what I did. Maybe some people are way too intelligent to understand or have a much better feedback on their hands. But regardless of that, once you die or if you die, you can actually restart the game or the level by either restarting from the very beginning or restarting from a certain checkpoint that Chiffon herself creates for you. In each and every track, you can at least have one checkpoint that you create, which means now if you want to start again, you can actually start from the very checkpoint and it will be a little bit easier for you. That also gets added into a challenge where you have to cross a track without using any kind of checkpoints. And that's what I basically did most of the time. Using checkpoints are good, but sometimes that was not the very best. Sometimes you needed more momentum to cross it. Sometimes I just wanted to cross a track without any checkpoints as well. I would always hold the button to restart from the very beginning. However, sometimes I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna not care about this track. I just wanna finish it. It's way too hard. I'm not that kind of gamer, okay? Do not judge me. I swear to God, if you... Another cool thing is the side missions that you get. You can choose to do these side missions and they're completely different and challenging at times. The one that was challenging for me was outrunning a bear who was just lazy and just sitting down in the best seat of the world and it was going through a riverbank while I was skating and trying to go to these insane obstacles and not able to outrun him. That's just unfair advantage at this point. However, these side missions are really fun to do. Sometimes these side missions are triggered by just the track that you were in before or sometimes you meet someone in a gnarly route who will then tell you to come by to this side mission to check something out. As far as the character goes, they are pretty generic. 
Most of the time they will tell you how great they are at skating and how a location is completely skatable and how some things are going on between themselves but you will never get to see them skate. All they do is just stand and talk. Even though that is fine but it would be a little bit interesting to see if you are skating and they're skating with you as well or beside you or maybe ahead of you. Some of their talks actually felt boring after a while and I was almost not reading them at a later point. Mike and dad also sometimes made some jokes which were good but they're mostly kids like. Overall if I look at this game I think it's a great game for a kid. This game would be a perfect birthday present for a kid or just a great game in general. The kids will have a lot of fun with all the jokes that these guys do and then you have these tracks at the same time. But the good thing is that these tracks will be challenging for everybody. So which means that anybody can actually play this game because these tracks will challenge you to go through all of these challenges. And yes, since it's challenges, it will get tough over time and that's the best part. That's where everybody can come in and just try to complete all of these challenges if you can. And speaking of that, the game never takes itself seriously. It's all fun, it's all happy, everything is great in the world. It's supposed to be fun and give you a chill time that you can play and have some amazing low-key music going on in the background. It mixes very well with this particular game. And skating is the main part which is very fun. You go through these amazing tracks, amazing locations and different directions in each track and some of them are really cool to see. That itself keeps you in the game. So Oli Oli World, have you guys played it? Let me know in the comments below. You can also check out some other game reviews such as Sifu which I got to play. Amazing game as well. And check out more game reviews every single week in this very channel.